in our place and in most places across the globe. The idea is to be receiving medicine and at the same time to have a rest for a moment. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanelungo back with another reaction video. So today I'm actually going to be reacting to coronavirus prevention. I'm sure a lot of countries have been hit with this so-called coronavirus and there's just so much going on. Is it? It's just, it's amazing how this has somehow taken over the entire world and now we have to shut down school, businesses and everything else. I mean, it's, it's just mind-blowing. So yeah, if you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. And today, we're doing a move to make video, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. My brothers and sisters, we are hearing of a virus, and we know of it, that has taken the globe by storm at this moment. This coronavirus, may Allah grant us cure, may He grant us protection, may He cure all those who are affected, and may He make it a test and not a punishment. I mean, my brothers and sisters, we must make sure that we have done whatever is in our capacity to protect ourselves, to be able to immunize ourselves by the simplest method, and that is prevention. Try your best. Make sure your surroundings are clean. Make sure what you touch is clean. Your hands are clean. Make sure you are in a clean environment. If need be, perhaps in certain countries, they would put on a mask in order to ensure that the air is somewhat filtered. All this is a duty that you have if push comes to shove. We are thankful in this country that we have not yet heard of any of such cases. But trust me, we are not immune to this. It can happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard all of us. However, my brothers and sisters, whenever we are failing in health, we always seem to visit the doctor, and we should and we must. And it's a duty to visit the doctor, to find out what's wrong with you. There will be diagnosis, there will be so many perhaps tests that they, the doctor might send you for. And you know what? People are always anxious as they await results, especially when they are not doing well at all. Very anxious. Do not remove Allah from that equation, my brothers and sisters. Remember, the doctors are there to help indeed, and we pray for them. But at the same time, if it's not for the help of Allah, Allah may decide not to show them exactly what's wrong with you. And yet, the favor of Allah is that the diagnosis would be correct and the medication would also be correct. So we can never remove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the equation. Always make a dua to Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he declared his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he clearly said, وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Whenever I get sick, it is He, Allah alone, who grants me cure. That does not mean you should just sit back and say, well, I'm sick, Allah will give me a cure, and you don't do anything about it. Allah gave you the brains, the capacity, Allah gave you the knowledge of medicine, or your neighbor, or someone in your city, or your town, might have knowledge of medicine, thereby call the doctor, and therefore you need to go to them to find out what's wrong with you, etc., etc. All that is part of the plan of the Almighty. You cannot just sit back and say, don't worry, it's the decree of Allah. If I'm meant to be cured, I will be cured. Well, probably it was meant that you were supposed to die, so you would die out of your foolishness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. My brothers and sisters, when a person is told that he is sick or ill or has a specific disease or sickness, it is our duty to pray for the person. Hence, we say right here, right now, may Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill in any way across the globe. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it is our duty to feel for our fellow human beings. It is our duty to feel for the members of the Ummah. It is our duty to reach out to them when they are not doing well. Minimum by praying for them, by asking Allah to grant them cure. Trust me, you don't know the power of that prayer is such that if you were to ask Allah to give cure to a sick person, the angels would be asking for good health for you as a result. 
you didn't lose anything. You might be healthy right now simply because you prayed for someone who was sick and ill. And the angel said, Oh Allah, give this person similar good health. Wow, isn't it a bonus? So think about it, my brothers and sisters. You would never lose anything by praying for others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all good health. Once again, those who are sick and ill in any way whatsoever, may Allah grant them cure. I mean, that having been said, we should be visiting those who are sick and ill as a duty, my brothers and sisters. This beautiful duty is that which is placed on our shoulders in order not to burden them, but to pray for them, to be showing that solidarity with them. When people are ill, generally they go to the hospital. That is the trend and that is the norm in our place and in most places across the globe. The idea is to be receiving medicine and at the same time to have a rest for a moment. So remember, when going to visit, stick to the visiting hours at least. Go for a bare minimum. Many times people are sick and ill. We go to visit them in a way that we make them more sick and more ill because we are sitting there for two, three hours and they don't have the courage to tell us, please leave, I want to rest or something of that nature. Therefore, remember when you go to visit the sick and the ill, make sure that you know the timing. You know when to go and how long to go for and whether to go or not. Sometimes people are too ill to want to meet anyone and here you are knocking at the door. They are busy praying that you leave and one wonders what you are busy saying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us cure and grant us all that sensible mind to be able to do that which is correct. My brothers, my sisters, usually when we are sick and ill, we draw closer to Allah, especially when it's prolonging, especially when it's taking long. I want to tell you today, any sickness and any illness that brought you closer to Allah was actually a gift of Allah. It was not a punishment, nor was it the anger of Allah. Remember that. If you were sick and ill, and as a result, you came closer to Allah, you called out to Him, you prayed better, you got up for tahajjud, you started doing things in a good way. Don't let anyone ever convince you that that was a punishment of Allah. How can something that brings you closer to Allah ever be the punishment of Allah? It was the mercy of Allah. If it took a serious disease to bring you back to Allah, surely that was cheap because you would now enter Jannatul Firdaus with a good connection with Allah rather than be a person who was healthy but far from Allah. Which one is in greater favor? My brothers, my sisters, it's a point to ponder. Think about it. In fact, any calamity, any problem, any accident, any negativity according to you, if it brought you closer to Allah even one inch, Wallahi, thumma Wallah, it was a gift of Allah for you. It was a gift. He brought you closer to Him. Yes, it was subhanallah, something you might have not liked, but it brought you closer to Allah, didn't it? If you lost your life thereafter, wouldn't you have been closer to Allah? And this is why sometimes man is so weak that when he is cured again, he goes back to his old ways and habits. People leave the clubs, they leave gambling, they leave adultery, they leave intoxicants, they leave pornography because they are sick and ill. They come for salah, they do their tahajjud, they dress appropriately, they become better Muslims and they cry to Allah. And they say similar to what the Pharaoh's people said at the time of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Subhanallah, they said at that time when the plagues plagued them, they said, you know what? If you were to call out to your Lord and we were to be cured, we'll follow you or we will actually believe in what you have brought. When they were cured, they ran away. They walked away. Don't be from among those whom after they are cured, they turn away from Allah once again. Don't let that happen. My brothers, my sisters, it's not worth it. Would you like to get sick again for Allah to bring you closer to him? And I tell you something else. When we are granted cure, consider it a bigger favor of Allah. Let your life change. Let something change in you. Become a better person. Become conscious of those around you and prepare for the day when you might not be cured, when you might go back to Allah without even being sick. How many people today pass away? They were not sick. Suddenly, heart attack. Suddenly, an accident. Suddenly, they contracted something and within moments or days, they were gone. It's happening, my brothers and sisters. It can happen to me. It can happen to you. 
just prepare for the day. Don't become depressed. You have to go back to Allah. There's no way that you cannot. You have to go back to Allah. There's no chance. There's no option. There's nothing besides that. You must return to Allah. Guess what? The good news. Allah is loving. He is kind. He is forgiving. Not just forgiving. The most forgiving. The most merciful. It only requires that you change. Now, I wish to address a very important matter. When you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, what do you do? I'm a mu'min. May Allah save God, all of us. From amongst us, there may be some diagnosed cancer. Suddenly HIV, AIDS, something else, suddenly contracted the coronavirus. May Allah protect us all. And like I said, again, may Allah give shifa to all those who are affected across the globe, no matter who they are. And may He bring them closer to Him as a result. My brothers and sisters, if you have been diagnosed with a terminal sickness, if you are terminally ill, suddenly you found out, you know what? This is cancer. Cancer can be cured. Subhanallah. Many people lose their lives. But remember the cures are always on earth. It's just that we haven't found a way to some of them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us cure. I like how he says everyone should be protected worldwide, not just one specific race, the one specific group of people, but everyone has to be out there being protected and we should be we should watch over each other. Because at the end of the day that's all we have. We have each other and the cure is always here on earth. But then some sometimes we find the cure, sometimes we don't. I mean that's just life i like his second point where he said um prevention he was talking about prevention they say prevention is better than is it cure so instead of being reckless out there why not why not preserve ourselves by preventing some of these things you can stay home avoid crowds you can sanitize your hands, you can wash your hands. Even when you touch something like this, after this, before you touch your mouth, nose, eyes, wash, sanitize. All those measures have been taught to you by World Health Organization. It's all up to you and if you have, if you think that you have these symptoms, cover yourself with a mask, but then at least now governments are trying to prevent this by actually stopping flights, um, putting a curfew on people, stopping people from going to large gatherings like schools, um, many things. At least everyone is doing that. It seems like this is a trend worldwide. They even have a movement. I saw this movement on Twitter, stay at home because of this coronavirus thing. So yeah, just take care of your souls out there and keep your souls warm. I read somewhere that the virus can't stand warm temperature or warm bodies or whatever the case is. Just take care of your souls. So yeah, let me know what you think about this particular case of the coronavirus and what you think about Mufti Mink's video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you.